Hey, what's going on YouTube? So it's the end of April in Phoenix and it is 72 degrees today, which is perfect. So I thought it would be a good time to install my transmission cooler, especially since by the end of this week it is supposed to be 100 degrees. So uh, I figured we would go ahead and tackle that today. In a couple of the previous videos, we installed a few of the component components um, while I was doing other projects. Um, if you don't know, I tow a fifth wheel trailer with my Tacoma. So this is the trailer that I tow. And I know what you're thinking, a fifth wheel with a Tacoma is pushing it. Um, but this is actually a pretty small fifth wheel. It's an ultralight fifth wheel. It's 4,500 pounds empty and my Tacoma is rated to tow 6,300 pounds because it's the long bed. So it's not as big as you think. From front to back, it's only 21 feet. But the video is not about the trailer. The video is about the transmission cooler. So a few weeks ago when we installed this switch panel, I showed you this switch right here, which is the uh, obviously the auxiliary fan switch. This is gonna be for an override so that I can manually turn the transmission cooler fan on. And I also did a video of this guy right here, which is an ultra gauge so that I can actually keep an eye on my transmission temps. So that way I can see if I need to override it or anything like that. For the switch, I did have to run a few wires in through the firewall uh, and go out to the thermostat controller. I have, well, actually I only have to run one wire to the switch itself. And then I ran the second wire that has to go into like a source of ignition. So a power source that comes on with the ignition. So under here we have the wiring harness for the thermostat controller. Um, it's just hanging out under here because I wired in the ground and since I had to add in the ground for the grill lights, I tied them both together to make it easier. And that's why this has just been uh, sitting underneath here, but it's been tucked out of the way. These are the two wires that have to be run inside the cab. One of them is the, the ignition power source that comes on with the ignition. And the other one is the fan switch override. And then this big red one goes to the fan. So that's the wiring harness. These are the products that uh, I am using for the transmission cooler. Auxiliary fan switch. It came from CH 4x4. Uh, I will see if I can find a link for that. And uh, then the other parts came from Mishimoto. So this guy right here is a, it's pretty much a thermostat. So you have a module uh, the wiring harness, and then you can uh, hook up the auxiliary switch or bypass switch so that you can turn it on at any time. But the nice thing about this one is that you can adjust it. So some of the thermostats that you can get are set. So they kick on at say 190 and then they kick back off at 170 or kick on a, a 210 and then kick off at 100, 190. But this one, you can actually adjust to where you want it, which is why I got this one. It was a little bit more expensive. Also, the thermostat that it came with looks more like this, and it has two wires. A lot of them only have one wire, which means it's grounded to it, and I didn't want to do it like that. So uh, I, I got this one since it uses two wires. Then I also got this piece right here, this is from Moroso, and the thermostat actually screws into this housing, and then it'll be used in line. Comes with a couple other wires and connectors as well. And this is the cooler that I got, also from Mishimoto. And this one came with a fan, and I liked this setup because this one's actually, the fan's actually screwed to the cooler itself. Whereas a lot of the other ones you were using, they were almost like zip ties. They would go through the cooler and you just kind of zip tie them on. 
and I didn't like that. This one was a, a, it looked much cleaner, much nicer. I also like the tube style rather than having a chamber on each side and then it's narrow passageways going through it. If there's any material in there, they'll get blocked and then the transmission cooler doesn't work. So this is more of a pass through, an easy flow through design. And it, the fan can be used to push or pull depending on how you wire it. It came with a few pieces of hardware. There's some screws in here, some brackets, a couple extra bolts and nuts. And then I picked up some clamps directly from Toyota because I like these clamps that they used. And I picked up some actual Toyota tubing. If you don't want to use these, I will put links uh, to some other transmission tubing that you could use instead, as well as clamps. So yeah, a uh, link for as many things as I can have will be in the description. Now, even though that we just installed the new grill, we're gonna have to take this off in order to get the transmission cooler back in there. I could probably get in there um, because there's tons of space right in here, but it's gonna be a lot easier to show you and a lot easier to work on if I just go ahead and remove the grill since it's not that difficult anyway. Now, in order to install the transmission cooler, uh, I cut this metal plate, which is just a flat piece of steel. Uh, I put in five screws here because I had five screws, so I might as well use them. And then I drilled two holes up top here. I painted it black just to protect it. And these two brackets came with the kit. I did cut them shorter on this part of it right here because I'm gonna actually tuck it underneath um, one of the supports and I had to cut it shorter in order for it to fit. I also drilled larger diameter holes right here uh, so that I could mount it. So this is, I'm gonna put a bolt through here into the frame and then a screw up top here to the bottom of the transmission cooler. And so here's the plan. So there is one existing hole right here that was from Toyota. It's got uh, a nut on there. So I believe this is an M6. And so the steel bracket is going to be mounted right there. That's what one of the holes is for. And then I'm gonna to have to drill a second hole right here. That's the only one that I'll have to drill into the truck. And then on the bottom edge, I'm gonna use these brackets and existing holes that are in this cross member. And I'm gonna put these brackets here, or at least that's the plan, that's the hope is that I'll be able to put the brackets here and then attach it to the bottom of the transmission cooler. Now my truck already comes with a transmission cooler, but uh, I wanted to make it more efficient. What I could have done is probably just added a fan to this. Uh, I found a fan that would probably work. I didn't buy it, but I'll put a link to that into the description. It's bigger than the cooler is but it looks like with the mounting holes, uh, since there's a bunch on each side of the fan, it looks like it could work. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, the hose right here and this bracket right here might be in the way, but obviously I didn't get the fan. It's only like $22, um, and I probably could even add that in addition to what I'm doing here. But I'm not getting too crazy here. I'm going to just disconnect one of the hoses from this cooler and run it over there. I'm still gonna keep this in the line and that's how we are going to do it. All right, so we got all the bolts and brackets tightened, all the screws, and it is nice and solid. So in order to compensate for the extra fluid that's gonna be required in the transmission cooler, um, I'm going to try something. I don't know if it's going to work or not. I did pick up one of these fluid pumps with different caps so you can put use it on different size bottles to try and pump some fluid in here before I even connect it. Um, it also, this can also be used to uh, change fluids on the transmission or differential. So I'll be able to use this for other purposes other than just this one step. Um, of course, link in the description if you are interested in this. Um, also make sure that you are using the right transmission fluid for your vehicle. 
Oh, here goes nothing. And there we go. We have part of the thermostat into the thermostat housing, and now we're just going to put that in line with the incoming transmission line. So we're going to connect it to this one. We're going to pull this one off from the cooler and connect it onto here which is perfect and we don't even have to do any cutting. So if I want to revert back to stock, it'd be super easy. And then we're going to take this long or this one that's reaching a little bit farther and we're going to stick that onto the stock Toyota cooler. With these ring clamps from Toyota, they have, actually have a little hook. So when you squeeze them, they will actually lock into place. I'm sure there's probably a special tool for it I don't have it, so I am trying to make do. I did use a little bit of thread sealant on these threads. Uh, I used a liquid Teflon sealer. Um, I made sure to keep it on the thread so it didn't go inside. I wanted to use that to lubricate it to tighten it up. And I was sure to not tighten this up too much because this is aluminum and this is brass and uh, I didn't want to break it or damage it. So I wanted to take a minute and talk about hose clamps real quick. These are the Toyota hose clamps that I chose to use. Um, these are another type where they will, they're, they're spring loaded, but these are actually from Toyota right here. These are probably the type that you see all the time and what most people would use. Now, my dad is a mechanic. He works for AAA Automotive. And he is the one that suggested that I stick with the Toyota clamps because he sees leaks all the time coming from these types of clamps. These are really sharp and they'll end up cutting into the hose. Also, as the, the hose shrinks or expands, these can apply uniform pressure and tighten as the hose shrinks, whereas these ones won't and you'll have, end up having a leak and a loose connection. Here's a better look of how I made the connections. So as you can see, I have the thermostat in line. This is the factory Toyota hose and I used that just to connect these two hoses. I didn't even do any cutting. And then this hose just comes in from the bottom and goes into the bottom of the stock transmission cooler. I didn't even mess with this line. Yeah, I, I'm very happy with it. It was easy. It looks like it looks pretty clean so far. Um, I might take a couple of zip ties and just hold the so I can make sure that these stay in place. I don't want them falling against the condenser. I don't think it will, but uh, better safe than sorry. It'll be easy just to put a zip tie in here. Now what always seems to be more time consuming is wiring. I always find it to take longer for me. I think it's mostly because I try and make sure that uh, the wiring's clean and neat, tucked away. Uh, I have some split wire loom that uh, I'll be using to organize some of the wires. Um, I have two wires that I'm gonna have to run over to the fan. Uh, we'll have to uh, run one from a positive source which I have the fuse box over there, and then I'll have to run the other one from the wiring harness here. And then I also have a piece to put in the thermostat right here. So this will just screw into this other brass fitting, and then it plugs into the wiring harness for the thermostat. And I also have to find a place to put the thermostat itself and relay. Now, before you start making connections, I've already made one here, but uh, I already tested it. Be sure to test out which direction because uh, wiring it up one way will allow the fan to push air and wiring it up the other way will cause it to pull air. So depending on how you want it set up, I want it pushing air through the cooler. Um, so for this application, for this fan, it uh, entails me hooking the black wire up to the power source and then the blue wire will go to the thermostat. So as you can see, it works, I tested it. I tested it before I crimped this and pushes air through the cooler.
at this point, we got the transmission cooler mounted, the transmission lines run and organized and make sure that they're not gonna fall into anything against the condenser or rub against anything. The wire is also run and tucked up along the core support. It goes up and it follows these wires here and they're actually tucked up on the underside, back on the back side. You can see the clips right here. So it follows those wires and goes into the battery compartments. Right here we have the wire run for the thermostat. Uh, I use some wire loom just to protect the wire because it is pretty small. Goes through the bottom hole and then goes into the battery compartment. This guy right here is for the thermostat wire. This goes to the fan and you can see, hopefully you can see the new, the newer wire loom in there. That's for the rest of the wiring. The wiring runs along back down in there and then runs two of the wires run inside the cab. The wire on the far side is the one that goes into the fuse box. I have not put a fuse in there yet. I gotta go grab one. If you haven't seen it before, this is my setup. I got one 100 amp breaker right here coming straight off from the battery and it goes into that fuse box right there. I have my air compressor and my retractable steps that are wired into there and now the transmission cooler fan. Now the relay, I ended up tucking up on, on the bottom side of the core support. Unfortunately, that's gonna be a little difficult in order to adjust the thermostat. It's kind of unfortunate, but uh, that's the best place I could find to put it. So now it's upside down. So as far as like holes that I have drill, had to drill, um, I had to drill these two holes. And then I also drilled this hole right here. Other than that, I just used holes that were already there. So now that we have the install done, I'm going to crawl underneath and see if we can change out some of the fluid. Uh, it'd probably only be like two or three quarts, but uh, I wanna swap some of it out since I do pull the fifth wheel. I wanna at least have some of it new. I think the entire system holds like 11 quarts, but you need special equipment in order to do that. And I do not have it obviously. So usually when you do it, it's only a couple of quarts, but uh, we're gonna see what we can do. Um, hopefully I can fit the camera underneath there so that we can get a couple of angles of it. So now we're laying on the floor underneath the truck. And what we're going to do is we're going to drain it. I got this pitcher from the dollar store and we're going to measure to see how much comes out. And then we will put the same amount back in plus a little bit more. This is a 14 millimeter bolt. So hopefully you can see that. It's just above two and a half quarts. So on the passenger side of the transmission, almost in line with the front edge of this cross member, there's a 15 sixteenths bolt that you have to remove in order to Fill the fluid. And now we gotta bring it up to operating temperature. You can see where the transmission is right now. It's at 85 degrees, still warming up. And we'll go ahead and see if the bypass switch works. And it is. And now that we're up to operating temperature, we gotta pull that screw out. And drain off any extra excess. All right, so I'm satisfied. We let the truck run for quite a while. Uh, we got no leaks at the bolts. I even cleaned off the area with some acetone just to make sure that the leaks, if there were any leaks, that they'd be easier to see. And I wanted to show you this. So this uh, is, uh, I believe, a thermostat for the transmission. It allows coolant to flow up to the cooler. I'm sorry, it allows transmission fluid to uh, run up to the cooler. And so, I have it pinned at the moment just to make sure that there's flow going through there. 
And this is actually a 332nd cotter pin that I picked up from Lowe's. I did have to drill the hole just slight, ever so slightly larger. I just used a 332nd drill bit and just ran it through the hole while I held it in, held the plunger in with a screwdriver to make it easy. And this is just, this is nice and easy to be able to pin it. And I know that it'll stay there, but I can also remove it. So when we opened up that plug to drain off the excess, this is what we were left with. Not very much at all. I also checked the connections up here to make sure that we didn't have any fluid leaks and they all look good. So I guess that does it for the install on my transmission cooler. It's gonna be a little while before I can test it out because uh, I don't have enough time with flight training in order to take my trailer and go camping. So uh, when I am able to test it out, I will be sure to let you guys know how it does. So uh, I will catch you on the next one.